Senator Diane Wilkerson's arrest and the, all the questions about how the uh, liquor licenses get awarded and all that, you proposed this new ethics commission up at the State House. I want to ask you a little bit about that, but I also want to know you, you supported her when she ran against Chang Diaz and made those robo- in the primary, right? In the primary, made robo calls for her. She, she, why'd you do that? She has not, I mean, she's, she's had a troubled past. Why'd you uh, put your neck well, out look, for Well, look, you know, first of all, I've, I've, neck I've, for, I've said, uh, I, I've said, um, before I, th- I can't remember whether it was on this show or elsewhere that um, Diane Wilkerson was the very first public official to support my campaign. It was a um, that was two years before uh, uh, the election, and uh, and I appreciated that. And so when she asked me to uh, to do the robocall, I was I was willing to do the robocall. Obviously, had I known then what I know now, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have uh, have done it. And and you know I'm embarrassed. Of course I'm embarrassed. Anybody would be. But uh, you know I'd also say. Um, who among us hasn't had a, a friend or a relative who hasn't disappointed us in some uh, in some way? I'm I thought you were going to say, who among us hasn't stashed some cash in there? <laughs> well, this is serious. But you know what's even serious. worse? It's, it is serious. You know what's Very really, serious. really sad what? is uh, um, uh, and and uh, and frustrating is it casts a cloud on all the folks up there. So many of them, most of whom, overwhelmingly. They run to work. Their only reason for being up there is to uh, is to try to serve uh, the public and to do it um, with seriousness and integrity. And so, the reason for this task force is to see. I mean, I don't. We we don't need a law to tell us that um, what uh, Senator Wilkerson is accused of doing is unlawful and wrong. Right. We've already got that. But there are lots of gaps. There are ways in which uh, um, our penalties are not very. Um, up to date, not very. The consequences are not very great. There's some overlap in the uh, enforcement authorities. Um, Secretary of State has some jurisdiction. The Attorney General, the Ethics Commission has some jurisdiction. The um, uh, what is it? Campaign finance office of campaign uh, office finance. Of right. They all have different jurisdiction. They overlap in, in in some ways. So it's it's a good time and a great occasion for us to uh, to look to tighten this up. Uh, to make it as transparent uh, as as uh, uh, as possible, and to step up. She didn't resign. There was obviously a unanimous resolution, Republicans and Democrats, as you well know. Uh, I think the Senate President, from the language I read, misunderstood the letter that Senator Wilkerson delivered that morning, saying I would abide. Uh, she didn't say I would abide by, but I can't remember what the verb respect. was. Respect. She didn't respect, right? And the Senate resolution said uh, she said she'd abide by, which wasn't it. Now she said she won't resign until she has completed all her work. She said this yesterday. Uh, there are reports that the ethics committee in the senate is going to is going to uh, recommend expulsion should she be expelled well all i know is what i've read in the in the newspaper and heard on on uh, on television so i don't pretend to know the whole uh, the whole case and i don't know exactly what the rules are in the uh, in the senate but it's it's time you know it's time it's it's time to Call it a day. Have you spoken to her since all this, by the way? No. You know, one of the things, Gov, you say taint. I am one of the three people alive that actually believes in government, so I worry about this taint stuff a lot. But the problem is there are two people serving in the Senate. Now, uh, it's only 5%, but it's still 2 out of 45%. Uh, Jim Marzilli has accused of pretty serious molestation uh, issues or assault issues. And uh, Diane Wilkerson, who not only continue to serve and get a taxpayer finance staff, but if they continue to serve through January 1st, they get an additional bump in their years of service for pension. And people... Well, you know what, back to pension reform for... Yeah. I'm sorry. To no, I'm just saying, but well, I can, it, it, every few months there's an issue on, in talk radio that you can tell crosses all party and yep. political spectrum. Yep. This is one of them. And right. people say, how is that allowed to happen? How can we have to pay more for people uh, uh, only... Uh, they're not... Uh, they haven't been convicted, but who are accused of horrible crimes... Uh, and we continue to pay them, and are going to pay more for the rest of their lives because they just continue to serve. Well, those are two good rhetorical questions and and uh, and separate ones. The year and a day rule, which is the pension thing yeah. you're, you're getting at, is on the table for this for your reform thing. for this pension rule. Now that's a that's a highly contentious thing, um, and for the for the listeners who uh, um, who may not know what we're what we're talking about, I, I think I'm going to state the rule uh, correctly. If you serve, if you serve. One day of any 12-month period, then you are deemed, then that 12-month period is deemed a year of service for pension purposes. I believe that's yes. correct. I, th- I, th- I think that's right. I think you're correct. And, uh, and, and, and you know, that, that system I don't think exists anywhere. I think the treasurer has tried to call attention to that in the past, and it hasn't gotten 
uh, anywhere, and uh, and I know that that is on the radar screen of the of the team that's looking at uh, uh, at the pension reform package we will file. I don't know where that will land, but it's certainly something I've been concerned about.